What is up guys, so today I'm going to be uh, showing exactly what I'm using to shoot um, high school and college basketball with. What gear I'm using, I'm also going to be giving three tips away at the end of the video to help you shoot basketball and shoot moving objects. Um, some of them are really basic and others I'm just, it's just my style of shooting. So I'm going to jump right into it and explain what gear I'm using. One of my favorite pieces of gear is the 5D Mark IV from Canon. It is amazing and it's recording this video right now. But it is on my tighter lens during basketball season all the time. My 70 to 200, which I'll re talk about next. It is awesome. I can't explain how amazing that camera is for what it's costing right now used. It is extremely cheap. It's like $1,000 off of what it is new. Um, and they're in great shape a lot of times. So, it is a full frame camera, so low light is amazing, autofocus is amazing, it's 30 me megapixels, which is plenty to crop on. Um, I can just crop that image down in Lightroom and get even tighter with it. Sometimes whenever the ball and the play is across the court and I take a picture of it, I have to zoom in really far, and if I'm tack on focus, which most of the time is, it's going to come out sharp even if I go really, really tight with that crop. Um, the noise levels are super low and I absolutely love it. Um, it is definitely my favorite camera so far until I get my hands like on a 1DX Mark II or something and that might never happen. That is one expensive camera. So it is my favorite camera of them all. 5D Mark IV, absolutely amazing. Some people hate it because it's no 4K recording but the only time I ever use video is right now and I'm not shooting 4K even though I could. So my 5D Mark IV is gripped and so is my other camera. I absolutely love the battery grip. Some people hate the extra weight and complain about the extra weight all the time. But it is honestly so worth it. I love the vertical grip. It doesn't hurt my wrist whenever I'm shooting. I don't have to go like that. It is one of the most key parts of my kit. If I use the camera all the time, I'm going to have a grip for it. My uh, remote camera slash my vlog camera, I never have a grip for. And I probably won't buy one unless I completely start using it for video and stuff and I need one. And at that, they're pretty cheap. On my 5D Mark IV, I have my 7200, which is an amazing lens from Canon. It is the Mark II version. They actually released the Mark III earlier this summer, changing the color white and a couple fluoride elements. But that's not very important. And this lens is killer for the used price right now. I would recommend anyone that's shooting to get this lens. It is absolutely phenomenal. And it shoots portraits, it shoots sports, it, it does wildlife. It's it's an everything lens. And nine times out of ten, a Canon shooter, a Nikon shooter, Sony shooter, doesn't matter. They'll have a 7200 2.8 in their bag if they're shooting anything but landscapes where they want to save weight and they don't care about 2.8. It is amazing. The depth of field is amazing. I absolutely love whenever the player goes underneath the basket and I can go all the way to like 135 to 200, somewhere in there, and just get their face in it and um, show some emotion when they're going up for the ball, rebounding, shooting again off of an offensive rebound. So it, it is amazing. I also take pictures from across the gym sometimes with it. And I was talking about how amazing the 5D Mark IV is whenever for cropping. This is what the 5D Mark IV is on all the time, and it's amazing to crop on. It is so sharp, especially with them 30 megapixels. Um, the IS is amazing in this lens, too. Um, I have shot stuff going down to like 60th of a second, which is almost unheard of. It It is insane how good the IS is. Some of that is also just me holding the camera still. But you're still going to have camera shake. We all shake a little bit. So the IS is key for this thing. And if you don't need the IS, just get the non-IS. And it's super cheap. And you'll be pleased with it. Um, at least all the reviews say the non-IS is just as sharp. So I run with two cameras um, on a black rapid strap. It is amazing. And I love the versatility both cameras give me. So my second camera is the 70 Mark II. Um, it's crop sensor, so you have to multiply your focal length um, by 1.6. So, like, this has a 24 to 70 on it all the time, which I'll explain next. So, really, it's like a 40 millimeter, which is not very wide. Um, I got this camera because it's I, it was relatively cheap and in my budget, and 10 frames a second is insane. 
it's like a machine gun and anyone's gonna be impressed by this just by sitting by it they don't even know how to know cameras but they're gonna be like wow that's really fast um, especially when I'm shooting group shots they're like that's tons of kit pictures why do you take so many well everyone blinks but I am actually gonna be selling this this later this year buying a 1DX or another 5D Mark IV so this thing is gonna go away after this season I think and I'm gonna upgrade it because crop sensor the low light is not nearly as good as the 5D Mark IV the resolution isn't as good and I love wider focal lengths so I really need another full frame camera so on that camera body, the 7D Mark II, I have the 24 to 70 2.8 from Canon, another L lens, amazing. I absolutely love it on my 5D Mark IV, but I hate it on my 7D Mark II. It is only on there because it's the only camera that's just like, close enough to a professional grade image. Um, it is not nearly as sharp on the 7D Mark II as it is on the 5D Mark IV, I find. Um, and the depth of field is pretty crappy too. I love it on my 5D Mark IV. On my 7D Mark II, it's not so good. And I know why, it's because it's full frame and crop sensor. I'm upgrading the 7D Mark II, like I already explained, and I'm gonna love this lens on the 1DX or the, another 5D Mark IV, where I already love it on mine right now. My uh, future plans are to always keep this lens as it is a beast and it's 2.8 and it's a massive zoom range. 24 to 70 is awesome coupled with the 70 to 200. I have 24 all the way to 200 covered at 2 point aperture, 2.8 aperture, which is awesome. And you can buy these pretty cheap, again, used right now. When I say cheap, I mean like $1,200. That's not bad for a <laughs> Canon L lens. One of my last lenses I use is a 14 millimeter 2.8 from Rokonon. Um, it is manual focus and manual aperture, so I, you got to manually focus everything. But at 14 millimeters on a full frame body, the depth of field is so deep that you can just put it on infinity focus and everything will be focused unless you're focusing really close to something, which is very rare with one of these. I love this lens, it is super sharp, but I'm actually probably going to sell it whenever I get the 16 to 35 um, from Canon because. It's two millimeters off and manual focus is a big turn off for me a lot of times whenever I'm doing action because I want to get focused and it's a prime. It's just not good for action, um, but I do love it right now as it was a cheaper alternative than buying this uh, 16 to 35 whenever I bought this about a year and a half ago. Uh, you can buy it new for like 300 bucks. So these lenses are really cheap, really sharp and awesome to get a very stretched out look even on a crop sensor so I will be sad to see this lens go whenever I buy the 16 to 35 but I might be upgrading to another 14 millimeter autofocus lens later down the road so who knows 14 millimeters might not be completely out of my bag forever okay now to talk about what I plan on doing in the future I plan on upgrading my 70 mark 2 to a 1dx and then after that buy another 5D Mark IV or a 6D Mark II or a mirrorless body if they have a mirrorless body out that I actually like. Um, that's going to be three full frame bodies, a 5D Mark IV, a 1DX and then one of those three cameras, another 5D Mark IV, a 6D Mark II or a mirrorless body that I absolutely like from Canon. That is going to be the plan for right now. That third body I plan on putting behind the goal whenever the school will allow me. Um, some schools might let me, some schools might not. But I'll have that behind the goal. You see it all the time in pro sports. You see LeBron James going up for a dunk or a layup and there's this picture looking down on him with the goal in the picture. That is one of the biggest shots that I've wanted to get for the last two and a half years when I started this and I'm slowly progressing that way. Um, it is amazing what remote cameras can do. I love the one on the floor. I'm just excited to get one up higher and get that shot. Whenever I started out two and a half years ago, I got the T6i with a 55 to 250 f4 to 5.6, I believe. And it's amazing to think that I can buy like 10 of those kits for what kit I'm running with now. And I can't express how awesome some of the gear that I've been buying 
and that helps me create better images and lets me create something that not everyone can create. Um, it is awesome what these cameras can do, but without me looking through them, they'd be useless. Um, so I absolutely love what I'm doing with basketball, what I'm doing with football, and what I'm doing with baseball, track, anything. I love shooting sports, even if there's not much money made into it. Um, there's Not everyone buys stuff whenever I put it on my website. Some people just take it off there, screenshot it, and post it. I don't make anything whenever they have my watermark on there. And these cameras cost thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. And it is incredible how people don't care about anything whenever you're shooting. But that's a completely different topic and I'm not going to go full on in there talking about how expensive things are and how little people care. I love shooting sports and I will continue to shoot sports as long um, as I can. And um, I love shooting portraits too and weddings. It's where the money is and it's my passion but sports is just some of those shots I just dream of getting one of these days. So, you've been waiting for three tips on how to shoot basketball, and um, they're actually pretty simple. One thing about shooting basketball is I always suggest is with your wide angle lens, always be lower than the player shooting. I see all the time people standing up taking pictures at games and stuff. Get low. Make them players look ginormous. It is an amazing thing what cameras can do whenever you just get low to the ground. I love sitting on the floor if the gym will allow me. It hurts my back sometimes, but the images are what I want out of it. It is incredible how stretched out someone could look at 14 millimeters on a full frame body. And they look massive. They look like they're powerful. So get low to the ground. That is one of the biggest tips I have for whenever you're shooting wider. Whenever you're shooting with a 70 to 200 where it's all the way out from the other side of the gym, it doesn't really matter if you're standing up or not because it's all the way over on the other side of the gym and you can't tell if you're on the floor or not all the time unless you get really close to the floor and make sure leading lines into the player with the uh, basketball goal, uh, lines. But most of the time, get low. That is number one thing about shooting basketball. All right, so my second tip is autofocus. Autofocus is what everyone uses to shoot sports. No one shoots manual anymore. It's too hard to track subjects, with especially shallow depth of field. But the thing about focusing is you gotta learn to shoot with one point or just a small cluster of points. So on the 5D Mark IV, there's 61 points of autofocus in the um, eyepiece. You need to learn how to use just one of them and track the player's head, face, or jersey, somewhere high contrast. Learn how to track them and do all the work yourself. Everyone's a photographer until you put it in manual mode. You put everything on manual and figure out that stuff. That is part of the tip. You need to know how to shoot manual. But manual focus is very important for basketball as you have players running in and out in front of you whenever you're shooting. And if you're just using the whole entire grid system, you won't get focus where you want focus. You can't shoot through things because the camera will try and focus before in front of it instead of past it. So learn how to shoot with one point or a small cluster. I personally love AF Expand, which is one point and then four points on like in a cross section, helping that center point focus. It is my favorite way of focusing sports and it's the easiest for me. That being said, a part of tip number two is our back button focus. Your camera has an AF on button on the back. Go in your settings, Google how to change it to back button focus. Very important for anyone to use is back button focus so you can focus on things that you want to and things you don't want to. It is very important to learn back button focus. And if you're not shooting with back button focus, shame on you because it is amazing. All right, so the next tip for you guys is to know your surroundings. Whenever you're on the baseline right behind the goal, players come in and out, sometimes out of bounds, you have referees running in front of you, you need to know your surroundings. So a very important thing that I've learned is to look through both eyes, but focus your eye that's looking through the camera more than the one out here. But you have to be watching what's going on around you. Shooting sports, you can get run into, I've been run into, 
you don't want to be hurt yourself you don't want your camera equipment to get hurt as it's very expensive to fix so make sure you're watching around you whenever you are shooting anything don't have your head nose in the camera and not know what's going on you want to be fully focused on what's going on sometimes when I'm looking for through the camera I am so focused into that that one of our player comes it looks like he's coming straight at me and he's a mile away that happens all the time and I jump back and they're not even there I'd rather jump back than not have any hesitation at all and take a big fat hit. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you. Please like and subscribe. Share on Facebook. Have your mom and dad watch it. If you want to shoot with me sometime for senior pictures or something, this is a great way for you to learn who I am and what I do, even if it's not a senior session. Um, I plan on doing behind the scenes of portraits. I plan on explaining everything. Um, the GCI vlog should have been up before this as it's getting finished right now and edited um, it is awesome to be doing this and I'm very excited for what YouTube is I have a goal for the end of the year of 5,000 subscribers and if I get that that would be insane um, I just want to grow as a creative and make new content and give somebody to watch something even if it's the most cringiest thing you've ever seen so if you did enjoy it please like and subscribe and um, I'll see you guys next time. See ya.